welcome to the 2016 Green Carpet Hats Off. And I've been waiting to do that all evening. It is an exciting evening. And on behalf of the students and the trustees and our foundation, staff and faculty, it's my honor to welcome you. Now this is also the time when we have a lot of high school graduations. And I've been told by area superintendents that three, excuse me, one out of three, I have trouble with the numbers, one out of three high school students have no plans beyond high school. Think about that. When in your life did you not have plans? So we're going to roll the clock back and I have three volunteers that are ready to be high school graduates. So please welcome Sherry Beck, Joel Miller, and Laura Miller to the stage. We're going to give them a diploma. I graduated from high school five years ago and went directly to a four-year university. I was able to finish in three years because of Northwest State College Credit Plus program that I completed while a high school student and then enrolled in summer classes at Northwest State. Those three years at the university cost me over $50,000 in tuition, room, and board. I received my college degree two years ago. I am struggling to make ends meet trying to pay back my student loan, which has costed me almost 7% in interest. I am hoping to have my loan paid off in 18 more years. I graduated from high school five years ago and went to work at a minimum wage job. Over the last five years, I've tried to get better paying jobs, but keep striking out because I don't have the skills the jobs required. I'm a single parent, and I've decided to enroll at Northwest State this coming fall. Completing my associate's degree at Northwest will cost about $12,000, including tuition, books, and fees, because I needed to take some refresher classes before starting my actual program. I've applied for the Changing Life Scholarship, and from that fund, I will receive up to $5,000 to offset the $12,000 cost. This is an exciting time for me, and I now believe I'll have a future that will help me support my family. I graduated five years ago from high school. During my junior and senior high school years, I was enrolled in College Credit Plus classes at Northwest State. During those years, I earned 15 credit hours, which is equal to one semester. I then chose Northwest State to continue my education. I received the honor scholarship that covered half of my tuition. I had a loan of $3,000, which was paid off this spring. Last year, I started my bachelor's degree from Miami University in Engineering Technology, which is offered here at Northwest State. Oh, and by the way, I'm getting married in August, and we are looking at buying our first home. What does Northwest State do best? work with all three of those personalities. We are community. We have a responsibility to the community to train, to educate, and to be responsible to business needs. We appreciate the way in which you support us. It is a night like tonight that makes College Credit Plus possible. In counting up the tuition that is saved in the community, it's $1.3 million. College education is not free. We are working hard to balance a budget. The scholarships that several of them mentioned come out of tonight's proceeds. This is our main fundraiser. We appreciate celebrating with you, and we trust you will be generous, because in your generosity, our students, our community will be successful. Thank you.
It is the 7th Annual Making a Difference Awards here to benefit the Northwest State Community College Foundation. I'm Rick Small, and I'm being joined by a longtime friend, Dr. Mike Carpenter with Dental Excellence. Congratulations on your award tonight. And to you as well, Rick. That's right. I, I was shocked to say uh, to find out that I was the individual award winner. Apparently, they had dirt on me, so I had to show up and uh, take that. But that's another story. I want to focus on your business. Congratulations for what you do starting back in 1998, and my, how that has grown over those 18 years. Yeah, I mean, it's really been an evolution both um, with the business and myself, quite honestly. Um, you know, when you become a dentist, I mean, you work, uh, you're like a tooth mechanic and, and you can't really think about anything else. You're not aware of being a leader. You're actually a leader of a group and then you got to run a business. And, and then when you're a new business in town, all the people come and find you for donations too, right? So um, I found that out pretty quickly, but um, I, I had a, I guess a, a generous background being that my parents were always very generous in the community in Liberty Center. And they taught me, I think the importance of that. And they didn't tell me ever to be that. They, I just watched them and that's kind of probably where I'm at today. Roots planted deep in Henry County, as That's you mentioned, right. uh, with the Carpenter name. And uh, that community service, though, you have really broadened that. You have reached out to so many different people in so many different facets, getting involved to, to really give back. Yeah, and, and it, a lot of it is the success comes um, from the giving. So, uh, you know, it's one of those really, really hard concepts in life to get is that you have to give you know, to get. So as, you know, the Lord has continued to bless us, it is our responsibility to go out and be good stewards with the blessings. And then so we help as many people as we can as we become, you know, even more successful. It just kind of, it just rolls. It just continues to roll. Mike, you're blessed with a great team. You have a, a dynamic team. It's pretty good size. It has really grown over the years. Yes. Is it tough to get them to buy into the give back? Um, no, because those are the people we hire. I mean, that is simply enough. You, we talk about it in the interviewing process. You know, we, we plan that you're a generous person. Um, and then, and if, and we, I think we probably with the environment and the culture in our practice, it makes people even more generous than they maybe were coming in. But the, the, the fun, the fun thing is as the business has grown and I've added, so I've gone from like four to 34 employees. We can just help at a greater level because we have more people to do, to do the giving, to do uh, work on patients or whatever. It, it, it just has allowed us to take our giving to a whole nother level. You're a guy I've known long enough that I know you're a man of vision and uh, you're not done growing yet. <laughs> no, uh, certainly not. In fact, ground was broken on a new office and one of the most exciting things about having a it's going to be over three times bigger in our current space is the fact we're going to be able to do more outreach uh, with our building um, it just allows us to help even more people you know both as a business but also on the charitable end of it well, Dr. Michael Carpenter, congratulations on the Making a Difference Business Award winner tonight, and we hope you enjoy the evening. Yes, and thank you again for all you do in the community as well. Our uh, Business Award winner is a dear friend tonight. Um, before I read this bio, um, I know Mike was very good in school. I know at Ohio State, magna cum laude, and like third, third in his class, graduating class at Ohio State in dental school. There were only four in that year, but still, <laughs> he, um, he's so bright, he's so innovative in dental practices. He has built a beautiful facility in Napoleon. Uh, his community outreach is second to none when it comes to giving back. And yet he's very good on the golf course, and I can't figure that out, as busy as you are and studious as you are. So he's very, very good at that. So I am going to ask questions about that later. So I think I've lost some money to you on the golf course. But let me tell you the story of Dr. Mike Carpenter and Dental Excellence of Napoleon. In 1998, Dr. Michael Carpenter purchased a Napoleon practice which became Dental Excellence to serve his neighbors and friends in Henry County and all across Northwest Ohio. Dental Excellence not only live happy and smile often themselves, but to others help out and do very well in doing that. Therefore, they are actively pursuing community outreach activities to help spread smiles all across Northwest Ohio and beyond. Dental Excellence takes the lead on their community outreach programs, such as with Dentistry of the Heart, which offers free dental services to 100 patients annually. Adopt a Smile and Operation Smile 
as well as the Operation Gratitude Halloween candy buyback, which they buy the candy from the kids to protect their pe uh, teeth and send it overseas to our military men and women. It is truly dental excellence. I can't think of a better business tonight to honor than with my friend, Dr. Michael Carpenter and Dental Excellence of Napoleon. Let's take a look. What he's done for me is that I had a mouthful of terrible teeth because we hadn't had any dental insurance and a very uh, painful experience. And uh, he was gracious enough to uh, remove some of those pains. I like working somewhere where I get to be challenged um, and to be my best. And that's something that, that's actually one of Dr. Carpenter's core values is to be our best. Our mission actually is to um, make people live happy and smile often. And obviously the smile part is the dentistry part. I bought the practice in 1998 for my dentist actually. And um, from there, within uh, two years, I built the office that I'm in right now, actually. Um, that started out at six operatories. I had to expand it to nine because of the success and growth that we had. Had just uh, maybe three or four employees at the time, and, and now we have uh, 34. I think some of the unique programs that we have are some of our giving back programs. So the charitable events like our Dentist from the Heart program, where we get to do free dentistry for up to 100 people who probably couldn't afford dentistry in the first place. So I think it's really neat. We have people coming from all over What's really great is, you know, we serve these people all day and at the end of the day, like, we're all like high-fiving and, and it's like the most rewarding day we have all year, you know, it's not the regular days that we're working, it's this day. Also, Veterans Day, that's one of those things that we came to him with the idea of what if we did free dentistry um, for veterans and he said, I love it, let's do it. So he donates his time and some of our hygienists donate their time that day. My wife had carried our dental insurance and we lost our insurance. And so he had that. And then they also do the program uh, Dentistry from the Heart. And that's usually in April, I think it is. And uh, I took advantage of that too. And they've been gr very gracious through all these programs. One really important thing that makes my business successful is recognizing where my blessings come from. Um, so, you know, you have to understand, you know, that God provides the success that I have. I am to pay him back by helping others and being a great steward with the success he has uh, blessed me with. Things that you're really passionate about, you can bring to Dr. Carpenter and say, hey, how do you feel about doing free dentistry for foster children? And he'll say, you know what, you make it work and we can, you know, and we can do it. Or um, Sarah in our office, she came and said, you know, there, there are women in the Daughter Project um, who are victims of trafficking, human trafficking. And she comes to him and says, is this something that we can do? And he says, yes, we can do it. I guess I have to credit my parents um, for that um, generosity, that spirit of generosity, because I'm probably just imitating the way my uh, family life was. So just having somebody who's kind-hearted, um, who's willing to work with us on those types of things and really gives us some input instead of just having it just be a job. I would like to say thank you very much for what you've done. It's been a godsend to me and I know it's been a, a game changer for a lot of other people. At this time, I invite Peter Beck and Ryan Miller, representing the foundation, to come forward and Dr. Michael Carpenter to accept his award on behalf of our honored business tonight. Gentlemen. Um, this is going to be funny that I'm sure in the future I'll never mention to Rick about crying up here tonight. I'm just kidding. All right. Um, no, seriously, I have, um, the only reason I'm up here is all the people I'm about to thank. So um, I might pull out a few cards just to remind me so I don't forget anybody. But um, uh, first of all, you know, you heard me mention it in the video, but um, I'm going to, you know, thank God because he's the one that made all this possible tonight, really, and why, why we're all here as many blessings. So um, and then I'm going to move on to my wife because she's the one that tolerates all the time um, I'm away that I put into doing all these things. 
Um, as you saw on the one picture, I do have four kids um, from age eight to 17, so they require a lot of time and attention. I often go home with energy from the office and think, I'm gonna get something else done tonight, and they immediately grab that energy. <laughs> and it's all I can do just to uh, stay up long enough and not be tired and go to bed. So, um, but they, uh, you know, they're the support that, uh, you know, protects my time and my energy so that I can make all these other things happen. Um, and then I have a lot of team here tonight, which was, uh, I thought it was really nice to be able to, to uh, bring them here. My doctors and my team at Dental Excellence and Napoleon. Um, obviously, you know, they've helped a lot of people. Um, part of the reason, uh, you know, I was really driven to, to do well and grow my business was to bring in, you know, more more people to help with these these kind of efforts that you just saw up on the screen with helping other people. So, um, you know, I can, by bringing more people in to help, we just get to serve more people. So um, I wanna uh, thank them. And they'll obviously, they're gonna help more people in the future and and adding 34 people that are generous is not, a, not an easy job these days that don't just think of themselves. So um, it's really nice to have that um, in our office. Um, actually, there are many organizations, some of which have auction items out there tonight, et cetera, that have actually supported um, a lot of what we've done with donations, you know, food and supplies for the different events that we've done. So I want to thank them as well. Um, and then um, really, and, and my team knows this, we talk about it, all this wouldn't be possible without our patients. So honestly, you know, our patients fund this whole thing. It's why we come to work every day. and. Um, those, those patients that are fortunate enough to be able to take care of themselves, they help us take care of those who can't. So uh, I'd like to help thank um, all the patients. And then obviously this uh, foundation is making a huge impact as well. Um, we, as, as Dana alluded to, we do, <clears throat> one of the things I believe in is, is everybody living up to their God-given potential. And one of my favorite parts of my job is, is, is leading the, the 30, other 34 people I work with and um, hopefully setting a good example. I have to think about that all the time so that I make, um, as our one young man said, lots of positive uh, decisions, <laughs> so to speak. So, um, and so, you know, Northwest State Community College is, provides a lot of uh, really good candidates for pe businesses like me to hire. So, you know, they make uh, Northwest Ohio a better place to live and work and go to school, obviously, as well. Um, and then, uh, again, congratulations to Rick. Um, um, I wasn't sure how to take being on stage with him, but because uh, he's, you know, he knows some things about me. So uh, you never know when some of those things are going to show up. Fortunately, this is a, I think this is a, a family uh, event tonight, so <laughs> he kept it clean, uh, which doesn't always happen. Uh, so, and then obviously uh, Adriel Foster Care, and, and we have a few uh, employees that have been involved with them as well. Congratulations for all you do. Um, and then I'm sure, I'm sure these people are, like it doesn't end tonight, by the way, right? So we're gonna keep doing what we do and what we do every day. This was just like a fun thing uh, to have happen, but we'll just go on and keep on giving back tomorrow. So I wanna thank you all, thanks. Our organizational award winner tonight at the Making a Difference Awards is Adriel, and uh, located here in the Archbold area, but uh, the primary office in West Liberty, Ohio, uh, represented tonight by CEO and Director Todd Haynes. Todd, congratulations. Thank you. Pleasure to be here this evening. Folks out there may have heard of the name Adriel. Tell us what it's all about. Well, Adriel is an organization that's 120 years old. It started actually in this area, Wayne County, but in 1900 it moved to a West Liberty, Ohio. So our main office is in West Liberty. It is a foster care adoption and uh, uh, organization that works in 48 counties in Ohio, and uh, we're just we're uh, uh, we are deeply concerned about the number of uh, children that are in uh, in need of care, and as long as children need a, a safe place to to live, our foster organization, our adoptive organization, is there to help children in Ohio. 
you have to deal with a lot of numbers. And I say that in a sense, not only the, the census of the children, the, the census of those that are actually going to take part in foster care. There is a shortage of foster families out there, I understand. Absolutely. You know, uh, it's it's the child's worst day of their life when when everything familiar is disrupted and, and that child is moved from the home and that child experiences strangers in the house taking them to a place that they don't understand, they don't know. And that's why I love our foster families and our foster parents. They're the first person this child meets and, and they extend a uh, welcome, they extend love, they extend uh, a safe environment for them to live in. And so our foster families are heroes. That's, that's what this is all about. Um, and you're right, you're absolutely right. We don't have enough foster families in Ohio. And whether they work with ADRO or whether they work with any, any foster organization in Ohio, this isn't a competition. We have more foster uh, need than we have foster placements. And so I encourage people to think about what can they offer and can they, uh, could they be a, a foster placement. God is tugging at their hearts. What does it take to be a foster family? Well, there's a there's a list of requirements, uh, 60 hours of training, uh, certain requirements around your home, uh, but we train all of our foster families. So Adriel has the foster training, uh, which also includes adoptive training. So some, in some cases, like my own, uh, receive a foster family or receive a foster child, and, and two years later, the reunification effort uh, didn't work out, and I was able to adopt my son. And so, you know, this is uh, as much passion as it is profession. And um, uh, I just encourage, even though there's some training involved and there's some requirements that we have to jump through for, uh, for, for certification, um, it's, it's an event and an opportunity uh, that is life-changing and one that I wouldn't trade for the world. How do the children make their way to you? Is it through referral and agencies, I would imagine? We work with the counties in Ohio, so uh, we have contracts with the counties, and when a child is placed into protective custody or into the Children's Services Network, they look for the best placement, and so we have foster uh, placements. We have a group home in West Liberty that has up to 60 beds. That's for behavior issues, and so if they're not quite ready for a foster placement, they can come to our group home. Um, we look for the right connection, the right family, the right uh, foster or adoptive family for each child that comes into our into our Adriel network. Uh, but counties are. Um, always looking for placements. Now sometimes the placements occur through the county. Sometimes they can't find a placement within their own county and that's when the children can come to us. Um, but we, like we say, we're in, in over half of the state and work with many counties and, and, and quite a few children. I'm hoping some loving hearts out there are so moved to make a call to you. What's the, what's the best way to contact you? We would just love to talk to anyone interested in becoming a foster parent. Um, we'll help them through every step of the way, and we would just be thankful to God if there are uh, people that uh, from this event uh, decide that perhaps they can be a foster or adoptive parent. Well, you're truly doing God's work, well deserving of the Making a Difference Award to Adriel. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You know, the common denominator I noticed tonight is uh, all three, from individual to business to organization, is all family and children. That's our common denominator tonight. And I, really the shining star of that is our organizational award winner tonight. Adriel has a long and rich history of caring for children in need. Founded as the Mennonite Children's Home in 1896, Adriel's mission has always focused on serving those children who either have no family or whose family environment is not safe or healthy. Adriel has a strong continu continuum of care, ensuring that children with varying treatment needs can be served. The foster care and adoption program, the family preservation program, and residential program all focus on positive reinforcement to reshape problem behaviors as well as empowering young people to make healthy life decisions. Treatment planning is an active and ongoing process that takes into account the needs of the youth and consideration for family relationships. The ultimate treatment goal for all children served by Adriel is to return them to permanent and stable family life. Let's take a look and learn more about Adriel. Foster parenting is really hard. Um, you have a lot, of, a lot of red tape, a lot of rules, a lot of um, emotional stress. Um, so they are just amazing with that. They have blessed us through foster care, um, placing children in our home, and we've been able to adopt six. Our mission, our mission is to provide quality care um, to all children in the spirit of Christian love, and I feel like you know, we really strive to do that, and I feel like we do it well. Well, Adriel provides a continuum of care. 
And that continuum of care always looks for the least restrictive environment for a student. So if a student is in uh, juvenile court or they're in a locked up facility, uh, the juvenile or JDC, uh, we provide a residential uh, facility for them as a less restrictive environment. Then we provide foster care as a less restrictive environment. We have adoptive support. If that child is not going to be returned to their biological family, we, we support uh, the foster parents and the adoption of, of children in our agency. They're also good with, you know, when children come into our home, they show up that night with a duffel bag full of um, care supplies, you know, personal care supplies for them, a pillow, a blanket, um, in, at any time if we need something like that. Um, if they have it, they're, they're able to support, support us and help us with that. We have 46 licensed foster families and just through just our Northwest office. So it's weekends, it's nights, it's Sundays when you know we would normally be going to church with our own families. It's, we do whatever we can to try to get the best families possible. This is um, a button for every kid that we've ever had in our home. Um, so some of those are just respites. Some of them are our adopted children that we have currently. So I think last week count was maybe 17 children. We also do respite, which is a short-term placement or um, kind of when other foster parents need, need a break or the child needs a break and we, we bring them into our home and, and keep them for a while. We're really looking to try to help the student, whether that's through foster care placement or whether that's through adoption, find a way that they can be a productive member of society and contribute to society and break the cycle of being a taker. It's helped our kids grow too. They, they kind of don't judge other kids. They kind of, kind of are open. So they, it's made them outgoing and they're a little more sociable. Sometimes too sociable. <laughs> A lot of times our foster families are able to adopt the children or they become adoptable and we find we have an impact on their lives because we find them a forever home. Um, you know, we try not to be judgmental about any of the families you know, for any reasons why they can't or are not able to care for their kids. Just focus on we're doing the right thing by matching these kids with a forever family. That's why I do this work. I see the results. I see the good that can come from a child being placed with Adriel. And we all rejoice when a child leaves Adriel and is prepared to return home or prepared to uh, live independently. Um, our work is, is getting them ready for that next step. It takes a whole village to raise a foster child and to help. It takes the whole community. Um, even if it's someone that brings us a meal on the night that they come from the church or, or gram, you know, grandma brings, brings over some extra blankets or you know, whatever, it takes a whole village or a whole community to, to help us. It's okay to love, love other, other people even if they're not the same as you or in their family and just let people know that it's okay. I had uh, my first uh, introduction to uh, Todd tonight, and uh, what a wonderful man. You just tell they're in good hands with him as CEO and a great, great company to uh, be part of. And I say company in the sense he's got some real caring hearts there for really doing God's work. Please welcome uh, Todd Haynes, the CEO of Adriel. And again, uh, let's welcome up Ryan and Peter Beck. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel like I've met some new friends this evening. Tom, I enjoyed our conversation before, and I just want to say thank you for, for putting this on and allowing us to be a part of it. Thank you for your work. And, and Robin, I, I know that she's probably out tending to details, but what a great contact for us to get all of this work done, so thank you. And Rick, I can't say enough about our conversation before uh, this event started. I feel like I have some new friends here tonight, so it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank our uh, board members. I want to say this, if you're associated with Adriel, would you just raise your hand? Um, because we're not all at one table. Uh, look around, There's, there are people here now. I just thank you for your support.
The board sets our policies that allow us to serve the children, and we thank you for that, that thankless job, uh, for spending years on the board, many of you, and, and the time that you invest, and in, in, we appreciate that. The real heroes tonight um, are our staff. Uh, I knew that I probably would only mess up what was already beautifully presented uh, this evening, so I probably should just say thank you and sit down. But our staff members here are the true heroes. Um, when we talk about foster care, I have to say that we deal with a, a child in their darkest hour, in their darkest day, when a stranger walks into their home, all that is familiar is taken away from them. They're removed from their biological families, and on that day, they're placed into the next person they meet, perhaps our foster families. And those foster families reach out to the child and say, thank you, you're, you're here, you're safe, you're welcome, I'm going to care for you, I'm going to love you, and as long as you're here, you are going to be safe, and you're a part of our family. And on that darkest day of a child's life, Adriel stands in the gap and allows our foster families to be well trained to know how to deal with that and that's what I thank these these wonderful staff members right back here to do or the foster family uh, that is back at our group home 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 a year our children live that are not quite ready for a foster placement because of their behavior are not quite ready uh, to return into any kind of adoptive setting we work with them at our group home and we bring them to that readiness level so that they can have a family and that they can have an adoptive placement we work to reunify families the judge's orders to bring families back together we believe in that we believe in that family unit and we work to allow our our um, visitation program to help reunify families together and of course our family preservation unit much of the work is up here in the north part of Ohio and it's when children's services are beginning to get involved with a family we step in and help coach that family we allow that child to use our respite network to maybe allow some space and time to exist we coach the family through financial issues or through through uh, any issues that they might have we try to keep that family together in our family preservation unit and we do all of this. We provide what we hope is the highest quality service in the spirit of Christian love. And we couldn't do that without our, our friends and our supporters and our churches. She said it takes a village. Oh my goodness, it does take a village. It takes a dedicated staff. It takes dedicated foster parents. And it takes um, a tremendous effort but the result is children that become our neighbors and our co-workers and be a part of our society in a successful way. I am blessed, absolutely blessed to be the CEO of Adriel, but I understand that the work happens right there at that table and those staff members with us tonight. I thank you for this award and, and I just am, am totally humbled and honored to represent Adriel this evening. Thank you. The 2016 Making a Difference Individual Award winner certainly needs no introduction. Rick Small from Mix 981. Rick, how's it going? Well, I'm glad you knew who I was. That's good. It's going well. Thank you. Now, you don't often get interviewed. How often do you have the microphone in your face? Well, uh, this is nerve-wracking for me. I'm, I'm keeping my hands in my pockets because I have the urge to grab the microphone. And I, I can see why people are nervous when they come in to talk to me now in my studio. But it's a different feel on this side of the microphone. But uh, something different never hurts. Now, let's go real quick through your broadcasting career. Uh, you've been at Mix 981 a long time. I have. I've been on the mix for uh, 21 years now. I uh, have been in radio as of this week, 33 years. And uh, I always tell people I haven't figured out what I want to be when I grow up, so I stick uh, with this for the time being. But I love what I do. I'm, I would like to sleep in once in a while, but uh, my alarm goes off between 4 and 4.15 every weekday morning. But uh, I love what I do. 
Now let's talk a little bit about um, turning the spotlight on yourself. You've been an MC of the Making a Difference uh, event, the Green Carpet event, since its inception. Um, how does it feel to have the spotlight kind of turned on you tonight? I don't like it, plain and simple. I really don't. In fact, when Robin called me and said that I was selected as the individual award winner, I was hoping she was joking. And I made a joke back in 2012. I said, I'll continue to MC this until you people give me an award. Uh, and that was tongue in cheek. I didn't mean that. And so we had an agreement. I said, I will accept the award if I can still MC. That way I've got some sort of control over what's going to happen tonight and uh, it, it, it uh, keeps me in the string of uh, doing the six previous and now here in year number seven. Let's talk a little bit about the community work you've done as we uh, uh, kind of dug through uh, everything that you've done it's just we uncovered so many different layers of great community work and service that you've done. Um, tell us a little bit about the um, the thoughts and the emotions behind you giving as much as you do to the community. Well, I believe in giving back and when you got a 50,000 watt radio station that's a pretty good pulpit to get out and get the word out and uh, of course our baby is Christmas for Kids and that was a group of us in a conference room back in 1995. We were young parents at that time and it tells you how long ago it was. Uh, we said that we wanted to do something that would affect children in a positive way. Uh, I have worked with Toys for Tots and other stations I had worked with and I thought you know what we can localize and do it better. The beauty of Christmas for Kids is uh, nobody gets paid. There's no administrative fees whatsoever. Every dime that goes in from a school child and pre-K all the way up through collegiate level, business industry, it all goes to the kids and I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of the fact we work with the Marine Corps League too. Uh, these veterans continue to come back and I always joke with them we don't get the young strapping Marines in their beautiful outfits. We get Marines that are 80 plus standing on cold street corners with us to get it done. And out of Christmas for Kids, Tiana's Wish uh, evolved uh, six years ago, and that is uh, dealing with families with uh, kids with catastrophic illnesses. Uh, we uh, cater to the entire family, not just the individual suffering, and it's through donations of people actively uh, getting involved to rally behind that. Hospice is another thing I try to lend my services to, and uh, just, you know, I, I feel if I've got the time and the effort to give, uh, I'm going to give, and uh, I owe my family a big thank you because they have to share me with a lot of people, but they understand. They're involved, too, in giving back. And uh, as the MC of this event in previous years, you've had the pleasure of introducing a lot of different award winners in different categories. What does it mean to you on a personal level to be part of that prestigious company? I feel like I'm the JV team compared to the varsity. There are some big names up there, and uh, that's why it's a joy to MC this, because I applaud anybody that gives back, if it's on an individual level, organizational level, or on a business level. It's good to see the community giving back in all of those facets. So I truly am humbled and honored by this, and uh, I'm in good company. I think my mom will be proud of me. So we'll, we'll wait and see. She, once she sees this, I'll let you know how it turns out. Well, there's no question. A lot of people are very proud of you. Rick Small, congratulations on making a difference in our community. Jim, thank you. Again, thanks for attending tonight. Um, I'm about ready to present my own award. This is first time ever, <laughs> least in suburbia Fulton County, this has happened. But um, I, I do want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. I am humbled and honored by the uh, individual award. You know, there is a uh, quote and I'm not a quote guy, I really am not, but there's a quote that says, no man stands so tall as when he stoops to help a child. Now it's attributed to Abraham Lincoln, although Donald Trump, I'm sure, will say he tweeted that last week. <laughs> um, the motto is at also the entrance of St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, put there by Danny Thomas. It's a creed I try to passion my passions with, and um, you know, I've been part of Christmas for Kids for 21 years, and for the past six with Tiana's Wish, and what I do is not special. What I do is expected. And it's, it's what we're on this earth to do to uh, help out those in need and to lift up those who are hungry and uh, those that need help, those who are ailing in health. And it's God's challenge to all of us. And it's not only for me, it is for you as well. We're all challenged to do this. And it only makes sense for a better world. So as I mentioned, I, when I first got the call to receive this award, I, I don't do what I do for awards. And uh, I do appreciate the committee um, selecting me for this award. But instead of accepting this as an individual award tonight, I do it for the kids. And, it, and for the men and women that uh, are part of my team. So with that, this video is going to save me right now <laughs> and buy me about three minutes. So I have no idea what's on this video, but um, this tells a story about what I do in my spare time. 
funny, great personality, um, very family-oriented man, and a dear friend. He's the face and the voice of the community. I mean, you see him all over, and everybody knows Rick Small, from young to old. I think first, I would say he's a godly man. He walks his walk and talks his talk. Um, second, I would say he's compassionate. And third, I would say he is selfless. You've always been taught, I guess, uh, to, to do what you're asked to do, you know. And, they, and they've done it. Through the Christmas for Kids, it has grown. It's taken its, its own identity on through the years. You know, when we started it back in 1994, you know, we made $1,200 that first year, and we really thought that was, you know, great. Um, to where we are today. This year, um, we raised um, $265,000. That's a record year. That's just in cash. It's not just about the presents, but it's about um, giving. And then someday, these kids will give back. Rick not only wants to raise funds and toys and blankets and food for the families. He also wants the community to know that there is a need there. There are a lot of people that are homeless. There's a lot of people that um, just don't have anything. I know for a fact I grew up uh, in a single parent home and back then there was not an organization like this and we didn't get much for Christmas. I can tell you through Raven's Care, through the Christmas program, he has changed thousands of families' lives over the years, over the 15 years. Through our uh, Tools for School program, he is tireless in helping us raise funds and school supplies to give out to children, backpacks to give out to children. Um, anything we ask for, he has no shame in asking for it on the radio so that we can give it to the families who need it. Well, I know one thing, many, many times he has been out on those street corners working and so deathly sick he could hardly keep going. And I mean, he really, I mean, he just put his whole life into that. I think Rick, like myself, we get more out of it than what we're, what we're giving. We have good times. Uh, and Rick enjoys helping people. So that's, you know, what he does. Like I said, he has that unique ability to bring across the passion. And that's Rick's personality coming through when you hear him on the radio and the, and the emotions that he brings across in listening to him. That is truly Rick. He loves his radio work, but he is not one to be like a lecturer at mass. He doesn't, he's not comfortable getting up in front of a group of people like that. But when he emcees, it seems to come out. I mean, he, but otherwise he, he's not comfortable. I do think that Rick is a positive role model. And I see that with my own grandchildren because every day when I drop them off to school, I say, be kind, be generous, be a gentleman. And that is what Rick, Rick is. In their future, down the road, they're going to look and say, I don't want to be like that. I would rather be like Rick Small. Kind, generous, and a gentleman. No, I do say it to him. I appreciate him as a co-worker, and I love him as my friend. I didn't expect that to my funeral. Um, <laughs> again, I thank you. Um, it's it's not not the trophies, but they are appreciated. So, here at the Making a Difference Award for 2016, I'm joined by longtime friend Mari Yoder. How are you? I am wonderful. 
Looks like we planned our outfits tonight. We're dressed in black for an elegant evening tonight. But uh, seventh annual awards night, and it looks like we have a great crowd on hand. We do. We have some wonderful people being um, honored, and also it's always for the benefit of our students, and so it's fun to raise money for scholarships. Let's talk about the foundation. That's the real benefactor here tonight. It is a solid foundation that really reaches out and helps those that want that education to get that education. It does. You know, there are so many people who want to come back to school, but cost is often a factor for so many and I can't tell you how many students I talk to after they get a scholarship who tell me that is what helped them to continue on with their program, that they were contemplating dropping out because of cost. And so it really can be a life changer for people. This is a big fundraiser for the uh, foundation, the Green Carpet event. There are other ways that people can get involved in the foundation. How do they go about that? You know, they can call the college and say that they'd like to have more information, and we'd be happy to give them a call or send them some information in the mail. We raise money for many things, not just for scholarships. We also supply uh, equipment for different uh, departments as they're expanding programs. You know, we have to buy that new training equipment to make sure that we're up on the greatest and latest so people are trained for the jobs that are out there today. Let's talk about the college itself, uh, always offering something new. You guys work hand in hand with business and industry all across the region to get just that right fit for your graduation uh, group, which, by the way, we sent another group out after last weekend. But they're well prepared for what uh, lies ahead. They are. And, you know, the last couple of years, we have been working very closely with business and industry because they cannot find enough qualified workers for their uh, jobs that they have available and so we've been working with them to, to take their own employees and help train them and a lot of employers now are doing tuition reimbursement for their employees but also we're working with the high schools to try and get more kids to look at manufacturing based careers a lot of them over the years kept thinking nope I got to go and get that four-year degree I've got to go and get you know a psychology degree a sociology degree and then they can't find a job but there are great jobs out there and most of them only require a two-year degree and the affiliation with other universities is a major stepping stone for a lot, choosing Northwest State Community College first. It is. We have students who actually start taking classes here during their high school um, time, and they're able to earn college credit that they then can take with them wherever they go. And then we have others who just choose to go here for the first year or two after they graduate, and it's a great way to save a lot of money because the cost to attend Northwest State is about a third of what it costs them to go to a four-year university. All right, your marketing role is done. Go out and enjoy the evening now. Great. Thank you so much, and we really appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, like we said, this is all about uh, the um, foundation and what it does. One of my favorite parts of the evening is what I would call an impact statement from somebody who has benefited through the foundation. And through events like this you're attending tonight or general donations to foundations on behalf of individuals, businesses, and organizations, it really does work, and it makes for a better community for all of us. And so to share his thoughts tonight, please welcome Michael Shadbolt. I would like to start off by giving a big thank you to all the donors. It is a privilege to be up here to represent my fellow student body. My name is Mike Shadbolt, and I am a high school dropout. I am 31 years old and a full-time student at NSCC and working towards a degree in industrial technologies. I've learned valuable life lessons because of my journey and wouldn't change a thing. I'm here tonight to tell you my personal story about how I got where I am today and the struggles I endured along the way. My mom faced many obstacles as a single parent with three sons. While living in Missouri, my five-year-old brother was involved in an accidental fire. He almost didn't survive. I watched my brother go through countless surgeries for three years. He's a true fighter and inspiration. While my brother and my mom stayed in the burn unit, I went to stay with my grandma in Ohio. While there, I got hit by a car crossing the road. I ended up in a body cast with limited movement and had to be carried everywhere. I didn't have a normal childhood, that's for sure. My mom remarried to my stepdad. He took my brothers and I in and cared for us like his own and blessed our family in a very difficult time. <clears throat> my parents did anything and everything to make sure my siblings and myself were cared for. My stepfather was a farmer in a lower class county in Missouri making pennies to the dollar, working 16 hours a day at times. Unfortunately, everything he made at the end of the week was not enough. 
Reflecting back to my childhood, I wonder now, how could a man work so hard in the hot blistering sun and still not be able to provide for his family? <clears throat> we end up having to move to Ohio to find more suitable work. And a pole behind camp pursued for three people would end up being a family of five's home for the next nine months. My parents were so wonderful, they made us think that we were on a camping trip. A very, very, very long one. <clears throat> I only found out later that this wasn't the truth, and now I appreciate all the sacrifices they made for us, and through it all, we remained together. When we made it to Ohio, we finally got a two-story house with a white picket fence. We had our happiness. However, in my teenage years, I ended up in jail as a juvenile for excessive drinking. What a wake-up call. I felt useless and defeated. I was ripped out of my parents' home and incarcerated for five months. I made negative choices that influenced my future. <clears throat> I ended up dropping out of high school while in my junior year. I soon became a dad and needed to start making positive choices. With history repeating, I soon became a single parent just like my mom. Caring for my children became my number one goal. With no one in my immediate family to ever graduate high school, there were no clear answers or direction. While studying for my GED, I remember reading an article in the classroom. It depicted a 62-year-old woman who had just graduated with her GED and received her doctorate degree. She truly inspired my direction. If she can do it, why can't I? I changed my course and got my GED and a handful of certifications while laid off from my former employer. When the economy took a plunge, I was laid off a second time after nearly a decade of employment. Thank God I knew the answers this time. NSCC was the righteous path. Now I stand proudly in front of you all today and say, I do have a future. For once in my life, I don't have to wonder, did I make the right choices? Hell yeah, I did. I found a quote online that reads as follows. Accept your past without regrets. Handle your presence with confidence and face your future without fear. It's my positive choices that got me where I am today. Today, my family is my inspiration. They're the reason education is so important to me. I have met the love of my life, and my kids are proud of their dad, and someday soon I will be an NSCC graduate. I am sincerely thanking all of you from the bottom of my heart. Opportunities like this just don't happen to guys like me. What a wonderful gift. I am NSCC proud. This time, uh, with a few words, the Foundation President, Mr. Peter Beck. Where do I begin? What an evening tonight. I'm glad that all you could make it and help support us here and help support our award, -winning, our award winners. Normally, we just hand out an award, um, as every, each of every one of our recipients got tonight. But um, on behalf of our uh, state senate and Cliff Height, he actually we add, added something tonight with a commendation, and they received that in a packet. So I want to thank Cliff Height and our uh, Ohio Senate. So that was something very special to us. I got a little housekeeping to take care of here, and I'll begin with, with that. And I would like to start off by thanking the many involved in making tonight's green carpet event such a special evening. The college staff, student workers, and many volunteers work so hard to provide the wonderful decorations along with delicious food, which is absolutely outstanding, as it always is. They deserve a round of applause. Jimmy G, what fun entertainment you provided. I'm sure will be continued to I'm sure will be continued to laugh for many days after that, that program. That was that was tremendous. And we thank you for help raising uh, funds for our scholarships. Our foundation would also like to thank the many individuals and companies that provided scholarships, along with wonderful gifts of our for our silent auction. Without your generosity and support, this event would not be possible. 
There are many reasons in the, for the strength of Northwest State Community College Foundation as it begins with the leadership and dedication of our foundation director, Robin Wilcox, and to over our 30 board members who are exceedingly generous with their time and wisdom. This dedication ensures that the foundation remains committed to our mission and guiding principles in helping change the lives of many students who attend this great institution. Tonight you heard Michael Shadbolt share his touching story of where he was in life and where he is today. It is students just like Michael that inspire our foundation to continue to work hard and secure funds so that many may increase educational opportunities. Michael, you have a great future ahead. Keep those dreams, work towards your goals, and success will follow you in all your endeavors. As you saw earlier in April, the college and its foundation hosted an awards reception that provided opportunities for students to be recognized in receiving scholarships along with meeting the donors responsible for investing in their lives. At this year's event, we had the pleasure to hand out a record-breaking $375,000 in scholarships which supported over 200 students that will continue their education here at Northwest State Community College. Looking back since 2010, our foundation has provided an astounding $1,764,000 in scholarships to individuals who live and work in our communities. As Dr. Stuckey mentioned, by us being here tonight, supporting and making it the difference recipients and this event, you also have helped contribute towards providing scholarships. Just last year, this event alone helped raise over $60,000. Thank you for your generosity. Over the past six years, I have been honored handing out awards to 18 Making a Difference recipients, and tonight makes 21. Each of those years, I have become more and more humbled hearing the stories and understanding that there is countless number of kind hearts that reside in Northwest Ohio. We are fortunate that our communities are filled with good people, just like the three recipients tonight, who respond to the needs of many in personal caring ways without expectation of reward or recognition. And tonight, we thank you, Adriel Foster Care, for your services to the many children who are blessed with the support and ministries that you are providing. Dental Excellence of Napoleon, Dr. Carpenter, and your staff, it is your business philosophy that goes well beyond just treating patients by supporting those who have a true need. And Rick Small, you are the ambassador of our region. And we thank you for, for you and the volunteerism and support that you are graciously providing over the years. On behalf of Northwest State Community College Foundation, we congratulate our 2016 Making a Difference Award recipients the impact that you're making to the lives of others is so important and so appreciated, which gives us great pride to have you accompany the continued growing list from the past recipients. Once again, congratulations, Atrio Foster Care, Dental Excellence of Napoleon, Dr. Carpenter, Rick Small, and your family. You truly are honorable, compassionate leaders in our communities, and we thank you for making a difference in many ways for so many people. Thank you.